Hey everyone, it's Thomas here. So today I am going to talk about the Shed Freya tube preamp. I call it tube preamp, even though you can run it in passive mode, JFET mode. It's because I only run it in tube mode. I mean, why would you use it in any other mode if you got something like this? Now, I hate this preamp, but I also like it. I'll explain why. You get what you pay for. That's what I really believe, okay? So, from my experience, something that's very cheap cannot outperform that something very expensive. Now, I just want to clarify, I'm not saying that you need to spend a lot of money to get amazing performance. In fact, in the world that we live in today, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get amazing performance. However, a $300 DAC will not outperform a $2,000 DAC. That's just the way it is. There's exceptional cases, for example, the ELAC DB 6.2, $150 bucks when it's on special, yeah, it will outperform some speakers that are in the 500 zone, assuming it's in the same category. The, I stress on the word category or same group is because, you know, if you don't like horn speakers, then uh, you won't enjoy a $10,000 horn speaker, but you'll choose over, let's say, a heart, base, a heart dome tweeter base uh, speaker. For example, Kef. If you like that kind of sound, you like that kind of sound. You enjoy a $2,000 speaker over a $10,000, doesn't mean that the $2,000 speaker is better than $10,000 because they are a different category. So in this case, when we talk about tube preamps, I'm not comparing to solid state and so forth. I have to say uh, this is one of these uh, equipment that makes me go question my sanity. It's like it's slapping me on my face. It can achieve 90% of my other tube preamps that probably cost five times the price of this. Maybe six, five, I don't know. It's that good. There's a caveat, of course. Uh, the problem is that I didn't use this tube preamp with the stock tubes. When I first got it, I already had new old stocks on it. I got it used, I was given the option to upgrade the tube, so I did. And once I got it, I tried it against my other two preamps right away. I had the carry at the time that cost maybe three, four times the price of this. And I'm like, okay, it's good. It's very good. Okay, but it's not better than my carry. Having said that, as I was so impressed with it, I called my friends, and I called my vintage friend actually, and I told him, you gotta try this. It's pretty good. So my vintage friend is somebody who plays with a lot of vintage gear. He is very knowledgeable when it comes to tubes. So I lend him the system. He helped me choose the best possible tubes for it. Not necessarily the most expensive, the best possible tubes for it. He spent a whole afternoon tube rolling, trying, and then when he gave it back to me, we were comparing to my $4,000 tube preamp, and we're like, whoa, if I choose 100 people on the street, and I ask them to do an A-B test, I would say 90% of the people probably can't tell a difference. Meaning that, yeah, this one will do better with this, but that one will do better with that, and so forth. Unless you're an audiophile, unless you're somebody who's very good at deep listening, uh, critical listening, then I would say most people won't be able to tell. It's that good. And that's that's why I hate it. It's, it makes me question myself, like, you know, should I keep this? Or should I keep my $4,000 preamp? Urgh. Because I'm paying so much more for that little 5-10% improvement. And this, I guess it's different for everybody. So how does it sound? Well, it's the new type of sound. I call it new type of sound because unlike the older tube gears, these ones are relatively quiet, they're fast, they're sharp, uh, they're holographic above all. So it's no longer about the color of the sound. They're very, this one's neutral. So if you want to exp experience the holographicness created by tubes, well, solid state can do it too, right? But it's a bit different when you use tubes, then this is a good entry point. In fact, in the old days, when I used to listen to the, my older, less expensive tube gear, I mean, there's, it lacks that holographicness. And I always wish that people can experience that holographicness that I experienced in the higher end gears. Well, guess what? This will give you. If you own this and you don't have it, well, move out your speakers. Who knows? Maybe it's your tubes. But this is what I call good enough. If I compare to a $4,000 tube preamp, yeah, 
I will find difference. But there, there is a thing what I call a threshold. Once you reach it, it no longer matters. Think of it this way. I have a computer, 3 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz. If all I do is browse the internet with it, you know, I, I mean, I can open the browser 0 0.0001 second faster. I mean, whoop, big whoop. Because once it's good enough, it, it comes down to a question of taste. Do I like it more, this one, because it handles piano better? Or do I like that one more because it handles vocal better? It really comes down to a question of taste. And I would say that this, with these tubes, have entered the world, entered that world where it can compete. So if I were to be critical about it, okay, I'm, I'm sure some of you who own very high end uh, tube preamps go like, Thomas, you must be exaggerating. Yeah, a little bit. I am exaggerating a little bit. I mean, sure, the noise floor on it is not as good as the high end ones. Absolutely. The dynamic swing is not as good. Sure. Um, it's not as smooth. Yeah, okay. Uh, by the way, my friend, I put a high isolator transformer in front of it to make it more smooth. So little tips and tricks like that. Um, but it is still good enough. That's the thing. You're, you're paying like a few thousand more just for that final 10%. And I, I guess that's what separates high-end gear and entry-level gear. It's that final refinement uh, at the top end. If you value fluidity, smoothness, then yeah, you'll pay your $4,000 for your tube preamp. But if you're okay to be good enough, and I mean, I mean not just good enough, I mean good enough, then this is good enough. The other day, one of my friends dropped by and uh, he doesn't like shit because he said, man, shit, they, they claim that they can beat uh, preamps that are many times its price. You know, that's crap, that's not true. I let him listen to this and said, and I asked him, look, we just compared it to a uh, tube preamp that's six times its price. What do you think? And he was like, yeah, okay, fine. But you're using these kind of tubes. So, okay, fair enough, fair enough. But the point is that the potential exists. So uh, for those of you who have it and you sold it because you think eh, it's, it's pretty okay, but not mind blowing, maybe you need these tubes. The secret maybe is here. Anyway, so what's really impressive for me, of course, like all tube preamps, good tube preamps, the holographicness, sound stage opens up, there's depth, there's layer, um, it's expansive, uh, there's width in the sound stage, and uh, that's, that's how I would summarize it. It's clean, fast sounding, reminds me of my audio research LS28, complete, that's a $10,000 current preamp. Completely different from my old LS uh, SP8 audio research, that old type of sound. Neutral, in fact, my friend who owns the vintage gear said maybe it's time for him to ditch his vintage gear because vintage gear is this color in the sound and he's more into neutral sounding system. And he noticed that these newer gears can achieve that. And for that reason, he's very interested in this. Some, the only reason he's not buying this now is because the construction quality inside, it's, you know, $6.99, right? When you take out the tubes, if you do a lot of tube rolling, it's not that good because you can feel the board moving. So if you keep plug and plug, eventually it'll probably, you know, give out. So if you're somebody who wants to do a lot of tube rolling. Uh, I think some suggestion is to open it up and hold on to the board whenever you move it. You know, <clears throat> uh, other complaints I heard is the, the volume switch. It goes click, 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 click when you turn it on and off. The remote, once you use it, it disengages this volume knob. But as far as I'm concerned, who cares? Seriously. It's like going to a restaurant, like that, that's just my character. I don't care about the service. Just give me good food and cheap. That's all I care. This, this button can be made of paper for all I care, as long as it gives me good sound and it's cheap. So I, I guess I'm that kind of person. So that's why uh, I appreciate this uh, tube preamp a lot. I find it strange that I don't see a lot of um, reviews on YouTube on this tube preamp. You see, it sounds like I'm giving it a glowing review, but 
it does impress me enough to for me to go like, yeah, it's pretty good. Maybe because I have these four tubes here. Okay, so maybe that's why I'm blown away by it. Maybe this is the perfect match. Who knows? Um, but, you know, there were times where I just used this tube preamp for extended period of time. Usually I swap around. But I remember at one point I told my friends, okay, you can borrow my tube preamps. And all I had was this left in the house. And another one that costs, I mean, 15 times more than this. But I remember I ended up using this one more. Well, partially it's because the other one is more difficult to match amps with it. This one, very easy to match. Any amp I put with it, yeah, it works fine. So uh, that's another positive uh, about it. Uh, so if you have it, uh, congratulations if you like it. Um, if you don't have it, I mean, give it a try, you know. If, uh, if it doesn't impress you, maybe the break in time, maybe the tubes, I don't know. You know, uh, at one point I was hoping not to make a video on it, actually, because when I first got it, I remember um, I went on the website and I started reading on, uh, on the shit Freya. It's funny because that website is entertaining. But at one point, what bothered me was the manual for the shit Freya. It was telling me, you don't need to use expensive cable, uh, power cable with it, because, you know, the, the cables behind the walls, they're all cheap stuff. So, you know, why would you need an expensive cable? For me, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I mean, you know, that's their marketing strategy appeals to a, a lot of people who don't like cables, right? But in my mind, first thing I realized was that I bet you you're not going to say the same thing in the manual uh, for your super expensive deck that costs 2005 right because you don't want to piss off those group of people and surely enough in that manual i don't see it coincidence yeah i'm overthinking it yeah possibly and i'm not trying to start a cable war here okay so no comments about cables please it's just that uh, you know i don't like people when they make fun of other people right it's, it's just my character so i say man i hope this is shit so i don't have to talk about it but it is not it, it is it's good would I sell it eventually? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, my other two preamp is better, but is it worth five times the price of this? Well, in the used market, about three times the price of this. That, that's something I'm, I'm struggling with right now. And I would bet you some people will actually prefer this one over my more expensive one, because this one is sharper. The other one's smoother. Not everyone likes smooth preamps. So that's also the question of taste. Uh, so with this, I guess I'll end my review. Uh, questions, comments, uh, you know where to put them. So uh, till next time.